These are the frequently asked questions from Algebra 2, Section 11.4, Day 2. Starting with number 18, we have a football team that has a 70% chance of winning when it doesn't snow, but only a 40% chance of winning when it snows. And it says, suppose there's a 50% chance of snow, and we want to figure out a tree diagram to talk about all of those probabilities. So the first thing is, they're absolutely, positively, members of that team are going to be watching outside the window during the day to figure out whether or not it snows or there's no snow. And remember, they told us that they have a 50% chance of winning, or not a 50% chance of winning, but a 50% chance of there being snow. Now, that affects whether or not they win or they lose. And it said they have a 70% chance of winning when it doesn't snow. So if there's no snow, things are looking pretty good. So 70% chance of winning means a 30% chance of losing. And then it says only a 40% chance of winning when it snows. So this would be 40%, which means a 60% chance of losing. And it says make a tree diagram to find the probability that the team will win. There are two branches here that will give us wins. The first is that it snows and they win. So that's going to be an and situation. It snows and they win. So 0 0.50 times 0 0.40. And then down here, it might not snow, but they might still win. So 0 0.50 times 0 0.70. So right here, we would have a 20% chance, or 0 0.20. And here we have 0 0.35, which is 35%. Now, both things cannot happen at once. Either they're going to win and it snows, or they're going to win and it didn't snow. So what we have to do at the end is we have to add these two together. So that will give a 55% chance that they will win. And there it is. Number 19 says make a tree diagram based on the results that we see here. And they're going to give us that information. And then we're supposed to find some probabilities. So let's go to the bullets and see what's going on. Of all the respondents, 17% are male. So it seems like they kept track of whether or not uh, people that came in were male or female. And then of the male respondents, so that's telling me that's the second piece. So the first piece is the people came in and they separated them into males and females. And 17% were male, so that means 83% were female. After that, they looked at whether or not people were left-handed or right-handed. And it says, of the male respondents, 33% are left-handed. So these are my male respondents, and 33% are left-handed means 67% are right-handed. The next bullet says of female respondents, 90% were right-handed. So here's my females. And 90% were right-handed tells me that 10% were left-handed. And what they want us to find is the probability that a female respondent is left-handed. So we want a left-handed female, which means the probability that they're left-handed and they're female. Well, we have a branch here for that. Female, left-handed. There it is. And if you're saying, well, we didn't have to do any math for that. No, I already did the math. 90% were right-handed, so that means 10% were left-handed. So the given pieces are all of these numbers that we see in that second set of branches. Where we've already been given whether or not they're male or female. And then the second part of this is we want the probability that a respondent is both male and right-handed. Well, that's an and situation, and that means we're going to have to do a little multiplication. So what we have to do is go and look for the branch for the males, which is 0 0.17, and then find the right-handed, which is 0 0.67. So 0 0.17 times 0 0.67. And that will give us 0 0.1139, which is approximately 11.4%.
Number 20. Part A says, suppose A and B are independent events with the probability of A at 0.60 and the probability of B at 0.25. Find each probability, and for A, we are to find the probability of A and B. That means we have to do some multiplying. So 0.60 times 0.25, and that comes out to 0.15 or 15%. Then for B, we are to find the probability of A given B. Well, this is not in the form of a chart, so what we're going to have to do is use the formula, which will be the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. And I realized, well, I just found the probability of A and B. That was what part A was, so that was 0.15. And the probability of B was given to us earlier on, and that was 0 0.25. So if we go ahead and do that division, we get 0 0.60. Then for C, it says, what do you notice about the probability of A and the probability of B given A? Well, here's A, and there's B given A. They are exactly the same. So they are exactly the same. All right, now part D. Part D says one way to describe A and B as independent events is the occurrence of B has no effect on the probability of A. Explain how the answer to part C illustrates this relationship. Well, we got exactly the same answer whether or not we used event B, so that's what we need to say. We have the same answer whether or not event B happens. It was 0 0.60 whether or not it was there or not. Number 21, we have a math teacher gives her class two tests. 60% of the class passes both tests. 80% of the class passes the first test. What percent of those who pass the first test also pass the second test? So students come into the room and they have to take a test. This one we'll call test one. And they can either pass or they can fail. And the information that they had for us up here told us that 80% of the class passes the first test. So that means 20% are going to fail that first test. Then they have to take a second test, test two. And we don't have exactly the information about what's going on here, except that it says 60% of the class passes both tests. So that means the probability that they pass the first test and they pass the second test is 60%. So. In fact, I could probably put probability pass test one and probability that they pass test two, and that would be a little clearer as we go through this. So what it says is, what percent of those who pass the first test also pass the second test? So what we're really looking for here is the probability that they pass the second test given that they passed the first. So what we're going to have to do is use the formula again to try to figure out some of the branches of this. So what we want is the probability that they passed both the second and the first, or first and the second, however you want to do that. And we're going to have to divide that by the probability that they passed that first test. Because we're looking for the second pieces of these branches that we have here. So the probability that they passed the second and the first, they told us was 60%. The probability that they passed the first test was 80%. So we divide that out and that comes out to 75%. So that means passing the first and passing the second, we have 75% here. So we could go ahead and say, you know, that one is 25% right there. So this one, what we really wanted was uh, percent of those who pass the first test also pass the second test. 
well, that's going to be our 75% right here. And basically, that's a given. They're saying, what is the probability they will pass the second test, given that they have already passed the first? So it was this math right here that found all of that for us. And the tree diagram just kind of helps with the visual. You wouldn't have to use a tree diagram to, this, to do this problem, but um, in fact, the formula was much more handy. Uh, but it does help sometimes to have a visual as you go through that. Then skipping a few of this 22 through 24 because that is uh, just doing notation. Uh, like in the first one, it says use probability notation to describe the chance of each event. Um, let S, C, W, and R represent sunny, cloudy, windy, and rainy um, respectively. So for 22 cloudy weather, we just would do this. Probability of C, cloudy weather. So you can go ahead and, and do those. 25 says you can take bus 65 or bus 79. You take the first bus that arrives. The probability that bus 65 arrives first is 75%. There's a 40% chance that bus 65 picks up passengers along the way. There's a 60% chance that bus 79 picks up passengers along the way. Your bus did pick up passengers. What's the probability that it was bus 65? All right, so let's start with what we know. Well, there are two buses when you get to the bus stop. And it could be that 65 will be first. In fact, let me put this over here. But it also could be that bus 79 is first. So we look up the information to see whether or not we know that. And they did give us that information. It said bus 75 arrives first 75% of the time. So that'll be 75%. And bus 79, and here's you at the bus stop, would be 25% of the time. Now, when that happens, sometimes they will take passengers. And sometimes they won't. And that would probably be because the bus is full. So let's see what we knew up there. It says there's a 60% chance that bus 79 picks up passengers. All right, so if we go on bus 79, which is this one, then it's going to pick up 60% of the time some passengers. Well, that means 40% of the time it's not going to take any passengers. Now, what else do we need here? It says there's a 40% chance that bus 65 picks up passengers along the way. So that means there is a 60% chance that they won't pick up any passengers. Now, what do they want us to find? That's what we have to figure out so we'll know if we need to use a formula or put something that we can just get immediately from the branches. Well, what they want is the probability that we're on bus 65, given that we were on that bus for the first pickup. So that we were on bus 65, given that we were in that first pickup. So here's what we need to do. We need to find the probability that we're on bus 65 and got picked up first and divide that by the probability that we got picked up first. All right, so now we take a look up there and remember we want bus 65 and picking up those passengers. Get bus 65 first and picking up the passengers. So that's those two right there. 0 0.75 times 0 0.40. That's going to give us our and. Now, picking up the passengers, there are actually two branches on here that do that. There's this one and there's this one. They can't both happen at one time, so we're going to have to take 0 0.75 times 0 0.40 plus the other branch would be 0 0.25 times 0 0.60. So 
So, nah, too many peas in this. I wish I would have picked up a different variable for that because we have being picked up first by one of those buses and then P standing for those passengers later on. So, a lot of stuff going on. Um, but what we would have to do is just crunch the numbers here. And this comes out to 0 0.30 over 0 0.45, which is 66.6 .6 repeating or 0.666 repeating. So approximately 66.7% of the time that's going to happen. So like I said, way too many P's picking up and passengers. All right, then um, we get to the tree diagram that relates snowfall and school closings. Find each probability, let H, L, O, and C represent heavy snowfall, light snowfall, schools open, and schools closed, respectively. So let's start with 26. 26 is the probability that the schools are going to close. All right, well, let's see what we have here. Looks like we've got all the numbers we need. So this first branch, our school's closing, and that third branch, our school's closing. So we would have 0 0.40 times 0 0.80 plus 0 0.6 times, and I could put the zero in there and just keep standard all the way through, 0 0.60 times 0 0.30. And we do the math on that little bugger and we end up at 50%. So 50% of the time, they're going to close. Um, and that's going to be, of course, 32 plus 18. So 50%. 27 is the probability that they have heavy snow and they stay open. Well, here's heavy and open. So 0 0.4 times 0 0.2, and that's 0 0.08, so 8% of the time. Now we get to those that you know, we either use the table or we can use the formula for, and that's 28, because it says the probability that it's heavy snow and they close. Probability, heavy snow, given that they closed. So I really do think this one's a little easier with the formula. Um, or, like I said, you could use the branches too, but what we're gonna do is we need the probability that there's heavy snow and they close divided by the probability that they closed. So we go back up and we look for heavy and closing. Heavy and closing, 0 0.4 and 0 0.8. And we need to divide that by the probability that they're going to close, which is something we just got done finding. And I believe that was back up in number 26 that we had to find the probability that they will close. And that is 0 0.5. So this one comes out to 0 0.64 or 64%. Then number 29. We want the probability that there was light snow given that they stayed open. So that will be the probability that there was light snow and they stayed open divided by the probability that they stayed open. Well, light snow and open, 0.6 times 0.7, because that's an and statement. And if 50% of the time they stayed open, or they, they closed 50% of the time they're going to stay open, so we would divide that again by 0.5 from the earlier problem, number 26. And that comes out to 0 0.84. Number 30 says that we want, let's see if I can squish this one over here, the probability there was light snow given that they closed. So we need the probability that there was light snow and they closed divided by the probability that they closed. Well, light and closed, 0 0.6, 0 0.3. And again, the probability that they're going to close, 
0.5 or 50%. That comes out to 0 0.36. And finally, I guess I'll change colors and try to squish number 31 up here. Probability of heavy snow, given that they've stayed open, would be the probability of heavy snow and being open over the probability of being open. So probability heavy snow and open. Let me scroll this back down so we can take a look at those numbers again. Heavy and open, 0 0.4 and 0 0.2. And situation, so we multiply the probability of being open, 50%, so 0 0.50, and that will be 0 0.16 for number 31. Now that might be it, because I didn't think you were going to have any trouble doing the problems from page 703. That should do it.